on guys, Matt back in, AKA El Chapo Guapo from the low NYC.com. Guap Drop and the Guap Drop Stinger Bot Consultation. So today we are heading out to Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Uh, we're gonna check out a store by the name of Statement. The owner Frankie actually commented on one of our recent videos of the Cam Kicks copycats. And uh, we love the statement he made in there. And you know, so we figured we'd head out there, check out his store, see what his store is about. The guy has only been open for four months and he's absolutely killing it right now. And you know, it's like the amount of growth he's getting on his YouTube channel and his Instagram is absolutely phenomenal. So we wanted to check him out, do a little bit of an interview with him. We want to open up our own store in the future. So, you know, it's nice to pick somebody's brain of uh, exactly, you know, what it took for them to open up their store. And maybe we can apply some of the things that he did to our own store itself, you know, not copying, but you know, just like financial wise and you know, just along those lines if we need inventory and all that stuff. But you now, before we get to that interview, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that notification bell and hit that subscribe button so you know that when we come up with new content like this, we definitely have a couple other people we want to do interviews with and you know, get some of that knowledge. So we'll see you at the interview guys. When you're looking forward to authentic king sneakers, what exactly are you looking for? Okay, so when it's a new pair, obviously like smell is a huge test, and mm -hmm. then you also want to look for um, excessive glue. I call it ghost stitching. I don't know if you've seen it before, but basically, it's anywhere where there's stitching here, mm -hmm. um, in like the Asian factories and I should say Chinese factories that fake the shoes, they'll have uh, they work in like a black light, and they'll have like a guide of like dots of like where really? where to stitch it wow. um and like really good fakes have been like wiping it off now because they know yeah but um they have like a stitch line and then you can almost always see it you know so you'll see the stitch line going across it wow, i didn't know that i mean but the main sign with this is that this yellowed okay so that's big that's that's good i've seen i've seen but the thing is too like i've noticed with like older shoes like there could be like older fakes and like they can have them like for years well years. a lot of the times older fakes so they're like better quality than the real so like they won't yell it's like crazy. Like, if you look at like fake off whites, like mm -hmm. uh, like off white Jordan ones, mm -hmm. like the easiest way to like when you find a pair of Chicago's, it's like they're so like blue white. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that like mesh yeah. is so like it's not yellowed. That's like scary. You know, and it's like almost impossible to keep it in that condition. Is this the right box? Like, should be. Uh, yeah, because it just looks broken. I was wondering why yeah. it like, just slides on so easy. Yeah, sorry, but there's like yeah, two sides of the front on it. I mean, normally when um, I'm going to be like barely looking at these, I'm going to be honest, because I trust you guys. I don't Sorry. think that you guys are doing anything like that, but I normally have like uh, four guys go over my shoes you before do. we make it. Okay. Before we like make a decision. What size are these? Four. You just hold on to them. No box. I'll, I'll explain in a couple. I'll explain a couple minutes about those. Okay. 
Okay. And they're used, right? I don't know, honestly. I couldn't tell you. Oh, because I didn't want to put my nose in it beforehand. <laughs> I couldn't tell. I know. Where'd you get these? I got them. I got them at a thrift store. Did you? They're how? How do they look to you? Because I I brought them to one shop and they legit checked them. Uh huh. And they said they're good. They said they're good. They off. They offered money for them for me. So. I kind of wanted to bring them to you. I want to see what you think of them. If I, if, I, I, I see I'm. Oh uh, yeah, they're definitely used. Um, because okay. I looked at a couple of things with them. I looked at that. That I know was a big telltale sign. Mm -hmm. um, they're supposed to be like a lot thinner. This cut is definitely weird for sure. Is it? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I wouldn't even be able to call it on these. Really? Yeah, it'd be hard. I'd like pass on it because like with see like some of the really really good Yeezys. Mm -hmm. I won't even purchase unless they have box. Sorry. Okay. You know what I mean? Because like this is like super hard to tell. Um, like the fact that this doesn't line up and stuff like that. What this does, is what a, doesn't line up to saw. So, so you see like up. that circle in there where it's supposed to like show the boost little. Oh, I got you. You okay. get what I'm saying? Um, and I would definitely have to have like a. Like I said, a couple a couple people look at these. So I'm gonna yeah. pass on. Them. I just, I'm not cool. calling them fake. No, I just don't no, know. No, it's cool. I uh, had um, I had. I had a couple of shops look at them, and they all called them. Yeah. As they called them as legit, so I was like, "All right, cool." Yeah. I only paid I only paid a hundred bucks for them, so. That's crazy. I paid a hundred bucks for them. I bought these. I bought along with these and this uh -huh. one at the same time, so I don't know if they came from the same well, person. So the like the other three, mm -hmm. I'm gonna pass on these two. I'll I'll take. Okay. Um, when my employees get here, I'll definitely take another look at the wave runners. I wish you had box for them, though. Yeah, but, they, when I uh, bought them, they didn't. They, didn't, they didn't have Yeah, I get box. it. So they're they're like, fine, which is awesome. So if they are real, it's sweet, you know. What's going on, guys? Matt back in, and I am here with the owner of Statement. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How good? are you? Good, good, man. So I just got a couple of questions uh, to ask you about your store. We took a video of your store. It is a gorgeous store, man. Thank you, I, thank you. I, I can't uh, can't really say enough about it. It's really it's, it's amazing what, I you, what that. you have accomplished. I appreciate that. Um, so tell me a little about um, yourself and uh, where you're from, your name, and um, where you guys are located. Okay, so I go by the name of Frankie Tape R. It's just been a name that's been carried throughout Instagram since I started my Instagram. I was big into cars beforehand. Um, I've owned a ton of businesses. This is now my currently only business. Um, I'm from New Jersey. I've been all over New Jersey, but a lot of my time was spent in Tom's River, New Jersey. Um, yeah, that's about it. Cool. So how did you come up with the name statement? It's like, you know, it, it's definitely, and you spell it with... It's from, a V, from yeah. What, yeah, it's an, so <laughs> me and my cousin were actually discussing in the car, and I was like, my cousin's like, I think it's an upside down, it's an upside down A. Yeah. And, you know, just how did you come up with just like the name statement and like the way it's spelled? So, um, that's, it's cool that you asked me this question because I, I put a lot of thought into it and I love the name of it. Um, so the upside down A was literally for two reasons, just because it was different. Mm -hmm. And because it's easier to trademark, the word statement's going to be hard to trademark because it's just a it's just a, a thing. Wow. But so now the name statement is because, and my motto is cut. And I'm sorry if you want to bleep this out for cussing on the channel, but it would be uh, fuck fashion, make a statement. Because fashion, in my mind, it's like like on the wristbands. They say it on the inside of my wristbands. Oh, it just no, says fuck nice. fashion, make a statement. It's very like subtle and like no one really knows. But um, you know, fashion comes and goes. Like the newest trends are like hot, whatever. And like, you know, people could get it, but that comes and goes like, right. You know, Supreme was hot and Supreme was dying down. Yeah. But like, to me, making a statement is like, you can give me anything and you can put me in a thrift store and like, I could come out making a statement. You get what I mean? Like it's, it's more of a style than it is a trend. I you know what I mean? So I like, like granted, it. I guess it doesn't, if it was a brand, it'd be completely different. But it, when it's like not on a clothing brand and it's a store, it's just kind of like my thing before I like, I don't know. I liked it. I liked the idea of it. And I, like I, it. I you know, I like the fact that like fashion is a come and go thing and statement is forever. If you, if you were always a fly person, mm -hmm. that's just how it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? You like you could put anything. together anything. Like this, like my employee that just walked in, like he's a fly guy and he'd be pulling off some crazy stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> he definitely makes a statement. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely, I like that. I like, I wasn't expecting that answer. That's a really, really good answer. <laughs> it's just cool. You know what I mean? Cause like sometimes, especially like, and even me, like I get influenced on certain looks because that person made a statement in my mind that per you know what i mean like i i like i said i was big into cars and i was at this car event and i pull up in my nsx you know cool car whatever and this dude gets out in this like super classy yet wild uh r8 
Oh, and wow. it, so he pulls up and it's like, it's his R8 with this big wing on it and he's, you know, it's just nasty sounding and he pulls up and this guy just gets out of this car and he's like tattooed from like head to toe, but it was just like so nice and proper and classy. And the one thing I can remember was he just had like a white tee on, some cargos and like, these frozen yellows, which at the time they were going for like a thousand dollars, and it made me fall in love with the shoe. Just be just the, the the look of it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. how everything just came together so well. Like he looked like, if you seen him on the street, he probably looked like the biggest scumbag you think in your life. But <laughs> he was the most classy, nicest person I've ever met. Wow. So it was just like it, it just made a statement to me, and like that image will forever live in my head. You know. Yeah. I was the same thing like when I saw the Yeezys, the, like the first Yeezys that came out of Kanye, I thought they were ugly and then I saw people wearing them and it was just like, wow. Yeah, like how they could put the fit yeah, together and like, like that's a statement to me. Yeah. You know? It's cool. I like that. What model or brand sneaker got you hooked into the culture? Like what, like, how did you, how did you get from one pair of shoes to this? It's probably, you probably got a bunch, you probably got a bunch mm -hmm. of these stuff. No? One shoe, one shoe one specifically. Shoe? It was just a Yeezy 350. I, I, there was only, at the time there was only a couple of Yeezy 350s out. Um, but I haven't been in 350 the, got you hooked into the got you into all this. Yeah, I haven't been in this game long. Oh, man. I haven't been in this game long at all. Um, wow. But I wanted a pair of Yeezys, and um, my first pair of Yeezys was a cream that I bought off someone like used one time. And I, at the time, I spent like 600 bucks on it. Um, this is, you know, only like three four years ago. Yeah. Like, um, like I like I really haven't been in this game long, but. Um, yeah, that shoe kind of got me hooked. I wanted a pair of Yeezys because it was like, it was the thing at the time. It was jumping like crazy, but I couldn't justify, especially yeah. being into like cars and stuff. Like I couldn't like, I was always dirty. Uh, my shoes were always beat. I wore Roshis for like my whole life. And yeah. like, I would just beat them things to piss. And I'd be at all times, I'd be like working on a car or something. So I'd be dirty, you know? So like a cream Yeezy is like so far, but like, I don't know. I wanted a pair. They looked cool and they looked really comfy and so I, I ended up buying a pair, and then after buying and spending this much money, I was like, how do I get this for retail? You know, and that's what got me into it. Wow, that's crazy. You started, you started with a pair of 350s, jeez. Yep. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, it sounds crazy because people ask me like how long I've been doing this. Like, oh, you must have been doing this for like 10 years. And I'm like, like three, you know, going on three. Like it wasn't long at all, but I, I just, I, when I do something, I love it with a passion. I know so much about it that like, I, could, I, I probably know, more about the stuff than someone that's been into this game 15 years you know yeah probably right here <laughs> probably right here that's how that's how long actually i've been i've been into sneakers for about 15, 15 years. years so yeah. and it's like I, I still have trouble like finding like what certain things are yeah yeah authentic. not only just like, the names but like yeah the authentic authentic that, yeah. well, that stuff is always going to change you know so like that's hard to get used to and like that'll never stop you'll always have to forever be learning in that but like you know just stories behind shoes yeah and stuff like that you know what did you do before this though to actually be able to build this like you know obviously you know people think that you know oh somebody's got to have mommy daddy money to, in order to put a store together right, you know right. like you know for instance cam's kicks like people thought like he had mommy daddy money no, he grinded for that backed it yeah. backed him and like you know it, it's not always like that people yeah. just you know eventually the hate stops though because I, I i still to this day get that like i'm you know i'm 29 years old like I, it's so no mommy just, and daddy so money mean? back at me you know if anything I helped my dad, you know what I mean? Like I'm about to actually buy him a business too. But wow. besides uh, that point, so um, I've been a hustler my whole life, you know, from the rip. Uh, I would actually used to sell like stuff in, in high school, which is like pretty cliche and like everyone says that. But in high school, um, I was selling like candy bars, stuff like that. And then my parents were divorced. So I'd always have like a, a joint custody type thing. Mm -hmm. So I used to go to Newark. My dad lived in Newark and my mom lived in like Tom's River. So I would go to Newark and I would buy like fake Jordans. And I would sell them, but like I would tell everyone that they're fake, like super bad fakes. When I'm telling you super bad fake, like <laughs> to the point where I, I, I bought them for $10 fake. That's wow. how bad, like brand new for $10. Colorways that were never even made. And I would tell them like, yo, these are fake. And like the white boys in my school didn't really care. They're like, dude, they're just Jordans and they're cool colors. And so they'd pay me 40, 50 bucks for them. So like, and then I started like getting it. Like I said, I was into cars heavy. My dad taught me how to do like radios. Mm -hmm. So like I would do systems in school. So like the seniors would be allowed to leave for like lunch. Well, the seniors would, I was a freshman at the time. And like they'd all get their like first car and everyone had systems back then. So like I would like it. leave for my lunch period and just go in the parking lot and like install their radios. And like I was just collecting that money. And then by the time I, long story, got expelled and then attempted college for half a month or week. And then I opened my first business, which was a car dealership. And th I was at 20 years old. That was you opened your business. own car dealership at 20 years old? Yeah. But like I know that sounds cool and big, but like little ass lot and like little spot i probably had four cars to start with that were like a thousand bucks each and like but it went well i killed it i did so well um and then after that i opened up a powder coating business which in within that business i met my partner tom who's not here yet but um 
And then he, he was into it heavy. He, sneakers? Yeah, sneakers, Supreme, all that stuff. He wow. was into it heavy. And I was like, dude, like, I want to do this. You know, and that's kind of like how the, how the story started. And he kind of like showed me how to. And I was like, bro, like, if you can keep getting these, I could give you money to get these. You just have to get them. And I could sell them. Like, I have a big enough following and influence in the car scene, stuff like that. Like, I could sell these things like water. You know, and that's kind of how it started. Damn. And then it just went... Ham since then. That's dope. That's how that's how me and him started. I actually started. I showing him. He was showing me about like older sneakers and everything. And I told him I was like, listen, I was like, I know about these sneakers. You can make money selling it. And that's kind of how we got started in probably 2011, 2010. And yeah, we, it, it took off from there. We're not nearly as big as you, but you know, yeah. we're, we're trying. We're trying little by little. Hey man, it's it's all the effort you put into it. You yeah, know? for sure. And it definitely is a lot of effort, but you know, we got We got to keep going. I wanted to also ask, do you have like a checklist when it comes to authenticating sneakers? Um. Yes, I do have, I have a checklist, um, but each sneaker is different. Um, there's always new stuff too. Um, and then as well as like, besides like a checklist, like a, a person list, you know what I mean? Like I said, like I have all my employees verify the sneaker beforehand. Like, I, and like, we've even bought fakes on accident. You know it what happens. I mean? Yeah, and like, it, it, it never hits the floor, but like, you know, especially like at events, you know, when stuff's moving so fast, like, yeah. you know, fake could easily slip, slip through the crack, but then when we bring it back here and, you know, we have X amount of people authenticate it, then it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, this is not going out for sale, obviously. Yeah. It's cool that you're so open with it because it's like most people say like, oh, I've never bought a fake in my life. Like you'll have shops that say, oh, I've never, we never yeah. bought fakes. You know, we never sold fakes. I mean, like, dude, you got to, you know, even like the biggest people in the game have gotten fakes. Yeah. You know, it happens. They get good. You you can get caught slipping. You could have a bad day. It happens. It's how it's how you go about the next the next move. That's how you recover. You know, if you if you accidentally sell the fake, you know what I mean. Then and you know someone comes back and now you want to deny it or this this that. Then that shows who you are. You yeah. know what I mean. It, it's how it's how you go about it. Like accidents happen as long as long as you can capitalize on that not happening again or handle it the right way. You have no issues. Yeah, I know. I know. It's like because I know there's certain things like I know I've seen people with like. There's some shops I know that they'll have like some, there's like some mark they have on it to actually identify their shoe. Cause I've seen people, say for instance, they bought the shoe, mm -hmm. then returned it, and the shoe that they actually got from the shop was real, but they'll try to return the shoe that they actually brought back was actually fake, and they've tried to return it to the shop. And yep. it's like. Yeah, it, it's uh, especially hard, you know, because you can come with so many different, you know, things that will check off everyone's boxes to get a fake buy, you yeah. know? Um, I don't know if you've seen the video of me going to Cam's Kicks, like messing with him. With yeah, that was that was great. Yeah, so like you know, putting it in a in a real box and all that stuff. But granted, it wasn't the right size and stuff like that. But like you know, all that kind of stuff. Like someone could walk in here with one really good pair of fake shoes, and then you know, have it in a real box and then real receipt and then real sneakers app verification or whatever. You know, and like you have all this checklist. It's you got it off. It's it's most likely gonna happen, which is messed up. I mean, to go to that extent is kind of stupid because. You know, that's a lot. But kind of like, like a scumbag, too, like for really yeah. trying to oh, take yeah. somebody to over. Like do, like, it's do not it cool. like to that much, you know? But I mean, it's even, I'm even seeing it now, which is really scary, is in store. So, like foot action, foot lockers, mm -hmm. the employees switching them out. What? Yep. Wow. Yep. We had a okay. pair of Jubilees come in. Everything was real on it, and the, and the shoe itself was fake, and he worked at foot action. And he got them from foot action. So, he swapped out the shoe? He didn't. Someone did, though. Yeah. Now, do you think that happened? Insane. Do you think that happened like at the store? Or do you think that happened at like no factory or whatever? Um, so I don't. I can't answer that because that's somewhere down the line. Whether it was in shipping, whether it was in his store, whether it was him himself, whether it was you know, it was a lot of Man, lot of different aspects bad. that could have ran down. God, that's that's brutal. Yeah, that's like that's like really really scary. That's, yeah, that and just, even in just shipping alone, like that's why we have our own like custom tape because like um, at my last store, I had shipped out a pair of like Yeezys. And they ended up getting opened up as around like Christmas time, someone bought them for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I was stuck in such a like shitty position because the the UPS guy or whatever brand whatever company it was FedEx maybe, they opened the box up, took the shoes out, then closed it and then taped it back up. This person got an empty box, they got a Yeezy a box, then a Yeezy box, and then an empty box in there. Like no shoes in it. And now they're like calling me a scumbag, like if I tried to get get over on them when it was the shipper, and then now I'm like, I'm assed out on the shoes. My customers asked out on the shoes. I'm asked out on the money, and now I have to pay double because not only did I lose my initial investment in the shoes, but I, I'm not going to be a scumbag. I'm going to pay them back. You know, so it was it was an all around shit show, and I, and I lost a customer. Like even though I paid her back and how I handled it the right way, lost a customer. See, you know, <laughs> listen, I, like I, I get it, but like you know, you did the right thing. You yeah. refunded the customer. I feel like that shows more. Yeah, absolutely. You refunded the customer. Like you lost out completely. Like you know. 
That's good though. You have now you have your own tape, so you don't you know listen. This is my tape. It's on. Right. You seen it cut or something? Yeah. You know. You know. Just refuse it the next time. Yeah. Don't don't take it. Wow. Right. That's crazy. So I wanted to ask too. What if you, if you don't mind going to? It's a little personal. What are your um, because we're trying to open up our own store, and I, we're not going to open up a store obviously as big as this. But what are you, like your monthly expenses like opening this store? Like what do you like? Oh God, that's a hard question. Of course, like it's just like I'll, I'll break it down a little bit. Not as far as just like buying shoes, like yeah. just like overhead in general, employees, um, you know, electric and stuff. Along yeah, those yeah. Lines. Okay, so my electric is put in my rent? my rent. Okay, um, the rent's over eight thousand a month. Um, well, actually, no, now I think about it, it's not that bad because I was thinking of somebody else in my head that's actually paying uh, yeah. close to that. So. Right. But then at the same time, is there's uh, you have a breaking point in malls, which is like X amount of sales that happen. Um, after you, make, you hit that, that number, you then have to pay the mall a percentage back. Wow. Yeah. So like that's something I huge to look that. into. That's I a big that mall was, thing. I so like that could get you good. You know what I mean? That can get you real good. Um, so it, it, it gets crazy with that stuff, but then like credit card fees get nuts and all that kind of stuff. So that gets like really expensive. Wow, I didn't, I didn't know you still like, cause when we, we have our key master and we have a breaking point on ours, but I didn't think, I thought that was maybe just for, for vendors. I didn't know it was also for like the actual shops that oh, they yeah. do a certain amount. Yep. Wow, that's, damn, that's brutal. Yeah. Holy shit. So what made you want to start a YouTube channel? So you commented, um, a while back on one of our videos about saying, you know, every shop should have a YouTube channel mm -hmm. as long as they're, you know, they're original with their content and everything. And, you know, that was a statement that me and my cousin, we loved. We loved what you said about it. And yeah. why did you decide to do a YouTube channel specifically? Um, I've always been a really good speaker when it comes to like YouTube. Like my editor loves me because like, and it's mutual if you're watching this too, because I love you too. But <laughs> he, um, I, I could just go off. Like he just tells me like, all right, this is what we're gonna do today, rolling. What's up with that guys? Like not, no cut, like one shot all the way through. I could do a sneaker review, I could do this. I've just always been good at talking and good in front of a camera. So like YouTube just came natural to me, but I also loved it. You know what I mean? Like I, it's, it's so, it's a personal marketing. It's the best personal marketing. It's you're getting paid to advertise, yeah. you know? So it's like, it, it hits every aspect. And I just, like I said, I love doing it, you know? Let's go, yeah. It, it comes so natural for me. Like even like my guys in here, like they try to do videos and they're like, dude, I don't know how you, how you do it so easy. It's like, this is like, you make it look easy and I get in front of the camera and I'm like, um, uh, you know, so yeah. I, I, just, I can just easily go off. You know, I'm good at talking. That's good though. That's, that's really, really good. So how is the sneaker community here in Cherry Hill? Like, you know, obviously you're in a premium location. Mm -hmm. um, so how, how is it here? It's awesome. So we have a melting pot for sure. Um, I'm five minutes away from Philly. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know. So like, Philly we're like, you could go right over the bridge and go to Philly. So like Philly is my biggest market. Um, but then Cherry Hill is also a, a good market as well. Like Cherry Hill has a lot of uh, people that are into the culture and just the whole surrounding stuff. So the community is, is, is great. And everyone that walks in here, if it's their first time in here, they're like, we needed this. Like this was so needed in this mall. It, you know, there's some within like, you know, half hour spans from each other, but mm -hmm. then I hit right in the middle. So, um, so you got that market. I got that market. Yeah. So like, but people love the store, you know, like I, I love the community around here. Like, people come in, they know who I am. They dap me up. They like, if they're walking the mall, they, they don't pass my store without coming in and just say, what's up. They don't, they don't have to buy nothing. They're just like, yo, Frank, how's your day, bro? You know what I mean? So it's like that kind of like, um, that vibe that you would get from a standalone location is like what we have in here. And that's what I like a lot. That's good. So it is a good, it is a great community and there's tons of like, it, like I said, it's melting pot. OG sneakerheads that come mm -hmm. in here, and you know they'll pick up a shoe off the wall and be like, "Dude, I haven't seen these in years." Yeah. Like so, it's cool. And then you talk with them and you know pick their brain on like you know what was the hot shoe when they were younger and like that that stuff's awesome. And then you got all the you know the new kids who come in here and just want to buy you know some V-Loan and stuff like that. You know. <laughs> so you get like you get all that uh, in in, a, in an awesome mixture. It's yeah. cool. It's like a mini sneaker con in the store. It's, yeah, it's great. <laughs> I, I love I love seeing stuff like that when people pick up a shoe. I'm like, oh, I remember when these came out. Or yeah. like, this is the shoe that was the first shoe I had. It's yep, like, yep, you know, yep. it's like these, these are my, these are my first SBs that I ever had. And like, awesome. you know, I, they're falling apart, but I will Who forever, cares? I don't even Rock care. With, I'll yeah. forever wear them. <laughs> Cause like, I got so many memories with these. It's yeah. great. So what did it take to, uh, to open up your shop? What did it really take for you to say, all right, well, I'm moving these, I'm moving these units. I'm moving a lot of units. Mm -hmm. My storage unit, everything's getting kind of crazy. Yeah. I think it's time I got to open up a shop. Um, so that point came when, uh, I was consigning a lot. I, so this, I never had like a storage unit. Um, I never had a ton of like inventory in my house, something like that. 
he was like, I'd buy it and consign it across different stores. Um, so I never physically had the whole inventory. And then it was just kind of like, I kept getting screwed over by consignment stores. Why, how so? You um, explaining. So like a ton of different things. My stuff would go missing, you know, which is almost a good thing you would think of because you'd be like, okay, if it goes missing, they have to pay you for it. Yeah. You know, so like, cool, it's kind of a good thing. But it's like, I wouldn't know that it went missing. Or like they'd wow. take my stuff out and wear it to the club. And then I'd what? find out later, like, hey, I'm the only one with this shirt oh, in no. there. And here's the owner in the club with my stuff. And I go in there one day and it's, yo, it's not there. And like, oh, uh, yeah, someone spilled something on it. So they had to get it dry cleaned. Like, dude, now it's not dead stock. Now it's not this, this, that. You know, like, no, you're paying me out for it. There's that. And then. Um, would they argue on it about that? Like paying you out? Or you'd be like, nah, well. You know. I mean, they'd try for sure. They would try. Really? Yeah, my partner, Tom, they used to like try. Like he's, you know, he's more soft spoken kid. And um, they always tried to get over on him. And that would like drive me up a wall. You know, I'm a bigger guy and, you know, I, I stand my ground pretty hard. So they couldn't get that over with me. And like when, when he was showing me the ropes and like starting to show me how to consign and like mm -hmm. what sort of consign and stuff and like taking advantage of him was like not cool to me, yeah. you know? So I was like, all right, like we're not letting this stuff happen. You know, even when I used to go online with him back then, you know, we used to stand in lines and stuff like that. And like, yeah. he'd be the first person in line. And then this big dude come up and be like, yeah, you're beat, dude. Yeah. That's and like, dude, he sat outside for six hours. Yeah. So now he's like, yo, you want to come with me on this release? And I'm like, yeah. And then the, when the dude comes up, he's like, oh, shoot, it's Tom again. You know, oh, you're, you're third in line now, dude. And I'd be like, all right, well, we can get busy right now. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so you can get in the back or what do you want to do? You know, yeah. and that's just kind of how it went. And then he realized, like, all right, this is cool. Like, I got something <laughs> on my side now, you know, like, <laughs> they're not going to push me around. Yeah, that's I, I remember doing that with releases and everything. When we used to go to Nike Town on uh, things 59th Street, we used to have we used to camp on everything. And people used to cut the line all the time. And it was right. like. I'm not how really do you let it happen? And like, yeah, you're not supposed to be thing, confrontational, even, and I get yeah, it. I'm not but. even really trying to fight anybody like that. It's like we're at the end of the day, well, I'm, I'm going to try to get shot or something over a pair of okay, shoes. shoes. Like, yeah. it's not, you know, it's not right. worth the moves my life. No, over it's, a pair it of really shoes. isn't worth it. You know what I mean? But like, it was more or less like, I ain't getting pushed around. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's one thing to lose your life, but uh, these guys do it like all the time, and it's almost like they just get away with it, so they think it's okay. You know? Yeah. So one one time, if you know, they they learn their lesson. That's all it takes. Uh, that's you know? cool. I like that. That's good. Did you have any like? Um, money or inventory like um before you opened up the shop did you have like a bunch of inventory oh, or yeah. did you you did you yeah. did have a lot oh yeah so uh, it was a good amount of money that i had um beforehand tom had a ton of inventory as well uh we had just inventory from saving up over the years and like mm -hmm. i said at consignments and we just pulled all our stuff out kind of and then um when we were deciding to open it was right before the pandemic here at this location I was right um before. so during the pandemic we were just stocking up heavy you know, during the whole pandemic and sneaker market was like up and down. At first it was down, then it shot up. So it was like harder to buy and stuff. But um, yeah, so we, we had a ton of inventory. Online sales probably had to be great, right? We didn't have online sales. You didn't have online sales at the time? Nope. Wow. We so didn't open until after pandemic. Oh, you didn't open until after the yeah, pandemic? Yeah, a month oh, after pandemic okay. we opened. Wow. Like when, when malls opened again in New Jersey, yeah. a month after that date is when we opened. Which like screwed me because the whole time since the pandemic, I wasn't even allowed to come in here and work on the store. So like, so that's why, that's what took the month. It took me a month to build this store. So like when the malls opened back up, I then signed my lease and then- uh, Oh, you didn't I, sign your lease yet? No, no. So then, you know, so I signed the lease after the pandemic and then uh, opened up the doors and got to, well, I didn't open the doors, just got to work. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I got to open now. You know what I mean? Like all these people are, you know, in the malls now, it's getting crazy busy because they just reopened them. So like yeah. I had to go crazy with it, you know? Wow, jeez. Um, so you mentioned you do have you have a business partner. His name is Tom. You said. Yep. And he does. What is his What is his? Um, I guess place really in the store. Okay, I know so you guys are 50-50 partners. Yeah, we're 50-50 partners. He does everything. I don't. Everything. I don't. Okay. He does probably more than me. Realistically, he does a lot. So he he basically we do a mix of who gets inventory, but it's mainly him. Um, like as far as like me finding like you know stuff and he finds a lot of stuff too like so he does more in these sneakers like get come in and ups guys walking in with like 500 boxes and i'm like what is this and you know and he also does the botting so he he bots heavy yes. he yes. bots heavy I like and it. he's he's good he's good and he's he's i've seen it's cool because i've seen him grow over the time you know and he's getting really good um and like, like he does like all the inventory putting it on the website putting it into the system all that kind of good stuff he does a lot of our you know money stuff like so he handles a lot of it and i handle physically being on the floor and then i handle youtube getting people in the door stuff like Damn. that customer relations um and then like finding big bulk buys because like a lot of people and that's only because a lot of people reach out to me because of the because i'm the face of the business mm -hmm. and you know what i mean wow so he bots does he bought like 
does his his botting game? I guess is very very strong. When it's it, pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty it's good. Pretty good. For people that are getting into reselling and they maybe want to eventually open a shop like ourselves, what's the best piece of advice you can give to someone that wants to open up a shop? Um, okay, follow my YouTube. That would probably be the best. But besides that, um, build your inventory now, but like keep it selling, keep it moving. Um, holding inventory is not a bad idea. I know a lot of people buy stuff on credit. Uh, always buy on, on sneakers, even if you think the shoe's gonna flop because you could always return it. Um, I would just say, uh, work you have to, you know it's it's a lot of money to get there yeah um, and I truly think and I it's a pet peeve of mine of working a nine to five for someone else and then not going home working your own your own dreams you know that's that's huge like so many people like they work a normal job then go home and like you know take a nap go to sleep whatever you know what I mean also get into the game now like get, like try to apply at a consignment store to work you know my employees make a ton of money I mean one of my employees made like twenty grand in a week because we let them consign in store. Oh, wow. So like, That's you cool. know, okay. so, and he could then push his own stuff and stuff like that. Wow. So, um, they all know the game so well, you know what I mean? They know that the, they, they have to like, Billy knows this game better than I do. Damn near. He knows the new next shoe that's going to come out. He knows the hottest shoe that's going to be. He's like, yo, these are going to hit, you know? So like he knows this stuff. Cause I'm, I'm so busy doing everything else. He's more up to date than I am with that's the stuff, good. you know? Yeah. That's good. It's like how me and him work. I like, I try to tell him about like certain shoes and he'll tell me about certain shoes that are coming yeah. out and everything. Now, this brings me to the next question. This is something that, you know, we're struggling with right now. Um, how do you go about hiring people you can trust to run your shop? That is so hard in this. Th that is like the hardest thing. My employees here either worked at my old store with me. Okay. Or I've met in this game. Um, the only one who I didn't really know was Saul, which we call him Saucy on our videos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So Saucy was the only one that I didn't know at all. He worked at the Pax on right up there. Okay. Um, and he would like kind of help me out with releases on like fear of God drops and oh, stuff wow, like that. Okay. And he said he doesn't want to work there because of how little he's getting paid. And I just told him like, yo, like I kind of seen an amb ambition to the kid. And I was like, Let, let's, let's try out. Let's get on board. Um, do you know sneakers? And he's like, yeah. And like, he actually knew a lot more than I expected him to know mm -hmm. uh, because he always wore something fly. And he was actually our first person on our grand opening or he was our first customer. Really? Yeah. In line. That's cool. Um, so yeah, and he's been killing it since. He does a great job. He's the only person that I don't know, but like I trust my team to the fullest, but they trust me, you know, because it's not like I just say, hey, here's your money, get to work. It's like, I teach them a lot. I give them opportunities to buy into my business or buy into my next move really? um, wow. because I don't like corporate stuff. I really hate that lifestyle of like, you could work for someone for years and years and years to get like a quarter raise. That's not cool with me. You know what I mean? Like you work blood, sweat and tears. And as far as like, you know, helping, helping my team out, um, they trust me because of those reasons that, mm -hmm. you know, I always will give them an option to be better. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want them to come here and make a check and go home and, you know, be, the, be as good as the next guy. You know, some of my guys here make more than a whole consignment store in themselves. Wow. And awesome. uh, I give them crazy opportunities and they know where my head is at and they trust me to the fullest and they, you know, can make big decisions on it. You know, like I wanted to get into like, um, we're currently looking at housing. So like, not only am I going to do it, like my whole team, like, okay, guys been saving up. All right. That's all dumped into like this market. Now we own like a complex, but like we're still all working here. You know what I mean? Because like I have the mind for it and I know, you know, how to, what I, what I got to do. So like they know that if they got my back, I got theirs. So That's the so trust just kind of comes natural. You know what I mean? If I, if, if you're, my store is in your best interest, this is going to be your store too. So you guys are like a family, like you guys are oh, like yeah, a real sure. tight knit family. For That's, sure. And you don't, yeah. you don't really find that a lot, like at a lot of shops. Like, yeah. I feel like you have people that like they'll talk about, yeah, we're all a family, but it's like at the end of the day, somebody's like trying to screw you over or, yeah. you know, it's, nope. it's not really We like don't have that. none of that in here. No one tries to, no one argues with anyone. No one uh, gets mad at anyone. We're all a family for real. That's dope. And I never even thought about it like that because like I never said that cliche thing like, yo, guys, we're family, we're this, that. Like, I mean, now that I think about it and you said that we are for sure. Yeah, like, that's awesome. You know, our that's, team, that's our team cool. is heavy. Like we trust each other. You know, we, it's, it's, a, it's a good team we have. That's I'm good. I'm very proud of my team. Cool. Where do you see, and I know you talked about getting you get into other businesses and everything. Mm -hmm. Where do you see statement going in five years? Where do you want five to go years. and where do you think it can go? Okay. Five years is a long time. Okay. Let's say like one year then. I'm going to say five years. Five I'm, years? I'm going right. high. I'm going high. Give it five so years. Um, I could open the next door now, right? I've got offered so many stores in the past month. Um, and like I said, I told you before, investors hit me with millions of dollars. Yeah. They want to, and I tell them no and stuff like that. Um, I'm ready to open up my next location. Do I know where yet? No, but we, me and my partner kind of made it a weird goal of it has to see how YouTube does to open up a next location. I, I know, I know you're going to do good. You're, you're already growing so fast on YouTube and yeah. it's like, it's, 
Yeah, I, I definitely feel you're, you're... So once the YouTube gets to a certain level, then I'm going to move to a, a second location, which cool. is going to be, you know, uh, we're probably not going to do consignment. It's probably going to be all store owned because of the fact that I'm going to have, you know, every, all of my team are going to be percentage owners in that store. 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year? I, that's the goal. That that's is my goal. goal. That's exactly my goal. <laughs> it wasn't until like recently did I have, you know, I think three months was like, or actually when you opened the store, a month after we opened the store, so three months now, because we've been open for four months. So um, yeah, a month after we opened the store is when like our YouTube started going wild. Um, I've partnered up with some big YouTubers that helped, that helped me a good amount. Um, and yeah, just taking it serious. That's good. You know? Yeah. What is your what is your like Grail sneaker in your, like your collection? Do you have in like, my collection? In your collection, do you have I don't like, own my Grail. I don't own my Grail. You don't own your Grail. Well, no, what is your because grail? if it, then it wouldn't be a Grail anymore. I got it, you know. But um, so my my all time Grail sneaker is a Freddy SB. Wow. Yeah. That is uh, that's the one. What size do you wear? Eleven. Same size as me. Shit. What uh, if somebody came through a shop right now? What what would be a number that you'd be like? I gotta have it. Well, so I've I've never seen me personally. I've heard that there is, but I've never seen one with a box. I've, okay. Yeah. They have, so like there was if, a few. Yeah. So like if there is a real legit one with a box, I'd probably be you know twenty twenty five ish. Yeah. There was one. Um, there was one that was actually at one of the last sneaker events that had it with the box. Really? In a size eleven? It wasn't a size eleven. Oh. I think it was a size nine. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's size it, nine in existence with box. Um, I know like, certain sizes, I mean, it's a long story. I don't know if you know the story behind Freddy's, but... It's like they supposedly got oiled. They, like, dumped them in dumpsters, and people yeah. dug them out. I, I, I yeah, it's, a it, it, is a, it is a wild story. I mean, that, I'd be talking for an hour about that stuff. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, like, there's certain, certain sizes that you know is automatically going to be fake if they have a box because there's not a box in existence. Considering we're getting into all, like, you know, how the culture's, like, changing and we're getting mm -hmm. with all these different fakes and, you know, like, people botting now and everything, where do you see the culture being in, like, five years from now? So um, I'm kind of going to play cliche and go off like Forbes, you know, because Forbes announced this to be like a $5 billion industry in the matter of five years. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I think that's true. I think as long as we have Instagram, we have like TikTok now, any of these apps that like are going to be influenced by clothing style, fashion, looks, it's just going to keep going up. I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. I think there's going to be more brands that come out and then I think it's going to be retro and then vintage. And, you know, in five years from now, you know, V-Loan has, has died out already and then it's going to come back or you know supreme is now box so goes our thousand dollars a t-shirt again you know like stuff like that because it's like you know you want to have the hottest new things but then people also want to be like oh you don't have this or don't you weren't even in the game then and we're only talking five years difference yeah you know so as long as we have like apps that always will have influencers which we always will people are always watching somebody else yeah. nowadays so it's just going to keep going up from there what do you think about like also we just got to supreme what do you think about supreme being sold off like what do you think that's going to do to Oof. to like because now they're bought, apparently they're bought by Vans, right? Yeah, like Vans, Vans, Timberland, all that. that so big are, do you think we're going to see like more Vans collaborations with them? Or like what, what's going to go on with that brand? I think it's going to, if they, so if one they thing, play it smart. One thing, do you think, this is where I want, do you think that it's possible that Supreme could be start being sold inside of like Van shops? Yeah, I think so. I, so that's what I'm saying. Like it can go one of two ways. They could play it smart, keep it limited, and then, you know, do well. With their branding but like knowing them being a big company they probably would just kind of like whore it out and like you're gonna see a supreme store in every mall type thing you know um Damn. so that but but then again now going back to the last question of where it's going to be is in five years is now supreme is going to be crazy you know because yeah. it's going to be like oh you have the shirt that just has every box logo on it and they come out every week and like it's like okay well i have you know the Savorsky that dropped and I have the LV box logo. I have, yeah. the, you know what I mean? That, thing, that piece is awesome. Like some, some stuff like that, like, you know, rare Supreme will then hold a higher value. Yeah. Like you still see it with like the older uh, picture tees, like the Mike Tyson tee, right. you got the Dipset tee, you got the Kate Moss tee, all yep. those, they still hold very high value. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you know, it, it, it sucks with, you know, if that happens to Supreme, it'd be good for the people that have the older collections, yeah. but for the newer people, it's just going to be like, Right. It's going to die away. It's going to be like nothing. It's going to be too watered down. But like the cool thing is like everyone's going to be, you know, oh, I was in Supreme this and I was I was there when this happened. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, you get that now. Yeah. You get that now. But like it'll be a different level. Yeah. I, I say that now because I, I think back to when I was younger and I, I got to Supreme in probably like 2009, 2010. Uh-huh. Damn, that's when you got into it? I, yeah, that's when I got into it. And <laughs> that's like, pretty wild. I remember having the Kate Moss tee. I remember standing outside when we didn't have these time slots or, you know, it was... <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it, was, it was nuts. It was, yeah. it was crazy. Like, it would be like bum rushing to the store. And yeah. it, it, was, it was a crazy time. But I loved it. I loved every moment of it. Yeah, I bet. That's cool that you could even say that. You know, I, those are things that, like, I, I can't get 
You know, like those are times I camped that I, out for sneakers. Like, I camped out days. I've camped out for sneakers days, too. Days, like. For sure on that. But that, I was like at the end of that era. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I said, I've only been in it. Like my first time in Supreme store was SS18. Okay, wow. So like almost two and a half years ago. Yeah, that's when I got wow. into this. That, that, that was my first time ever in the Supreme store. That's my first time ever buying a Supreme item. That's my first time ever seeing a Supreme item was then. My last question is, so I want to know, like, I don't, I don't see any, like, you have, like, security. I know, you know, yourself, but mm -hmm. what security, if you have, like, somebody coming here that's, like, irate or whatever, mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you, how do you go about handling that? So, like, if you look at the store, um, it's pretty simple because, like, I mean, it's not like people come in here to fight, but, like, when it comes, as far as, like, stealing and theft, I mean, not a lot of people are going to want to take one shoe. So, yeah. like, that's that. Oh, like, people negotiate, like, if you're negotiating, say, for instance, you, like, not saying lowball, but somebody thinks the shoe is worth a lot more, and you mm -hmm. say, like, oh, I'm going to give you, like, 200 bucks. And somebody's like, what are you fucking crazy? What's wrong with you? How do you, how do you go about, like, somebody, like... I mean, I, that's just kind of like, hey, if you don't know the market, you don't know the market, and, like, you don't have to take the price, dude. Like, yeah. it's kind of, like, almost more like a calming someone down because, like, you're wilding out for no reason. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if someone comes up, and they're like, oh, this, this, and this, and that, and it's just like all right, cool, so like, I just don't have to buy the shoes or whatever, you think my price is too high or I think your price is too high, whatever the case may be, like, all right, man, like, you could just have a good day. Yeah. That's it, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's never gotten really to that point. Um, I mean, some people will bug out when it's like, you know, you tell them that their stuff is fake and stuff like that, but like, yeah, uh, dude, I'm, I'm just the middleman. I'm not the person, you know what I mean? Like, me just saying it doesn't, you still get to keep your shoe, yeah. have a good day. If you think it's real, then go somewhere else with and it. And that's the thing, too, you know? like, people, people, like, People have to understand too. If if the shoe is real, you obviously want to try to make a deal with them because you obviously want to try to make some money. So it's like I'm not telling you your shoe is fake so you can get pissed off. I'm telling you your shoe is fake so you can be educated. So right. that the next time when you go buy this shoe or something, Facts. you don't get fucked over. Yeah, you just want to help them. Yeah. You know, that's cool. And well, I, that's what I try to do is like I try to give everyone a lesson when they when they come in with a fake on how to spot a fake. Yeah, you we're know? actually going to be doing that because the pair of Yeezys that we have, um, they're a little suspect. We're mm -hmm. thinking so. We're going to wind up finding out if they're real or not. I had a couple of other consignment shops say they were real. Mm -hmm. So I want to see. Maybe he pick, Maybe you pick up a few things that they didn't pick up. Or maybe they just didn't dig into it deep enough. And they're just like, yeah, yeah they were good enough. All right, we'll let them go. Were you on video then? No. Well, oh, I, I videotaped it. I did it. We actually did a video um, two days ago where I showed it, where I showed the shoe. But, you know, I, I didn't, I don't want to put that. I don't want to put them on blast yeah, yeah, yeah. if there's, you know, because, you know, it, it's, it's not good. I'm not, I'm not trying to hurt anybody yeah, at all. Yeah. That's not my intention. Right. But if, you know, if the shoe was fake, the shoe was fake, whatever. Yeah. I, I can hey, return sometimes it's still. like uh, like getting someone on there, you know, opening their eyes, like when I did with Cam. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wasn't trying to hurt his business at all. You know, and I, that was, I, a, that was what I liked. Yeah. You, you, you know. It was more or less like, hey, dude, like, be careful because I've been doing this, you know, for a little while now. Um, and well, actually probably the same amount of time as him realistically, yeah. but like, you know, I have much more of a traffic in my store. So, you know, it was more or less like, hey, dude, this, this is something that can occur. You know what I mean? So, like, be, be aware of this kind of stuff, you know? When someone, because, like, I've even done it myself. When someone comes in with stacks of shoes of some heat, like straight heaters, I don't legit check them as hard as I should. You know, like, after I legit check the first five or six, and now I'm on the last pair, I'm not looking into it as, as hard as I would because this, this dude's got, you know, and I already checked them to the fullest extent of yeah. like all fight Chicago's and you know dead stock MCA's and you know Yeezy ones and Red Octobers and they're all legit right yeah. like hundred percent and then boom if there's a fake at the bottom yeah you don't you, don't you would never think that yeah you, you would never think, think that it. and that's what I did with Cam I brought a ton of like heat heat and then seeing if I can catch them on it just to be like hey man like just be careful you know like, yeah. It's good. People can go to crazy extents to try to sell you fakes. I like it. I, I like just like talking to you and having like, you know, off camera and everything. I feel you are like definitely for this culture. And it's like it's great to have like somebody like you be like a part of this culture and try to educate people and teach people and, you know, just try to show people the ropes. It's like yeah. you're so about your team, man. It's like it's great. Like, you know, like I said, I don't think there's, there's not a lot of shops out there like this. And, you know. You're definitely one of them, and I appreciate it's great. It, it's great to have you for the culture. You know, yeah. it really is. This is my life. It, yeah, I love this. It's stuff. fun. It's fun. I love it for real. This has been a, a fantastic interview. This interview couldn't have gone any better with the owner of Statement. Do you want to say anything, camera? You want to plug your information in, man? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll plug uh, my Instagram. My personal Instagram is uh, at Frankie Tape R. Um, the store's Instagram is at Statement, spelled with a V instead of an A. Um, go follow our YouTube channel. It's just Statement. Pretty simple. And yeah, my I'm having a sneaker cleaner release soon that's gonna be on Amazon. So if you could purchase that, that'll make my world because it is a good sneaker cleaner. Cool. Good man. I appreciate you, brother. All right, Thank guys. you again for Thank you everything. for coming out. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. So we'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy, everybody.